My dear friends, as we gather here together today to remember Verlin, I would invite us all to stand and face towards the, the back of church. We gather together today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of Christ, Verlin died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And I now would invite us to join in singing our opening song. My brothers and sisters, let us pray. <coughs> o God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Verlin, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I would now invite us to be seated as we listen to God's Word. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. <clears throat> 
The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if in the eyes of men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. <clears throat> Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them, and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved to them, and his sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Our response will be, though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, Fear no evil, for you are with me. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. We are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight, yet we are courageous, and we'd rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, 
I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear family and friends in Christ, may the Lord give you peace as we entrust Verlin to the grace and mercy of our Lord. And we also gather to support each other and to encourage each other with our assurance of faith in the resurrection of our Lord and in the power of his love. We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Verlin, and we are grateful for the life that he shared with us. For whenever we gather as a community of faith to celebrate the Eucharist, whether it's a simple liturgy during the week or a more solemn celebration on Sunday, one thing we always do is to remember in a very special way our faithfully departed and their families. On behalf of Father Austin, I would like to extend our sincerest condolences and sympathy to Verlin's family and friends here today. And I would like to assure you of our continued remembrance of Verlin in our thoughts, our prayers, and masses in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead. Verlin was born on September 15th of 1948 the son of Richard and Regina Borman. And he grew up near Sprague,ville and attended a one-room schoolhouse just down the road from the family farm. And after completing his education, Verlin began to work at Sullivan Service Station here in Preston. Drafted in 1968 into the United States Army, Verlin proudly served his country in the Vietnam War. And Verlin would marry the love of his life, Jane Kilberg, on August 22nd of 1968, on base at Fort Hood, Texas. After returning from the military, he began working at Ralston Perina in Clinton, working in production and eventually as a mechanic. Verlin retired from Purina after 39 years. His life was marked by hard work and taking care of his family. In retirement, he began working at the Preston Country Store for another 10 years. Verlin loved his cars. And Jane shared his red 67 GTX along with the Road Runner were some of his favorites. <coughs> Verlin also had a special and particular care with his vehicles, like most of us. A scratch or a dent, yep, that really hurts. Jane shared that many times they would just go for a day drive and check out the car lots or an occasional auction. It truly was the simple things in life that Verlin enjoyed most. Watching the Chicago Cubs play ball any baseball game, and maybe with a cold beer in hand. Verlin was a quiet man, a humble and gracious, with a humble and gracious heart. He was a member here at St. Joseph's Church, the Preston American Legion, uh, Preston Ambets, and a member of the Knights of Columbus. And most of all, he was proud of his family and when ha was happiest when the grandkids were all around to spend time with them. Together, Verlin and Jane raised six children and celebrated 55 years of marriage. Our reading from the Book of Wisdom tells us that although there are many in this world who would believe that all life ends when our earthly existence comes to an end, we know from our faith that the souls of those who have passed from this life will be in peace with God and have eternal life with him, that those of us who trust in God will abide forever in his love. 
when we were baptized, when Verlin was baptized, we joined Jesus in his dying and leaving behind our old self, and we joined Jesus in his resurrection, becoming new persons. When we respond at each moment of our lives to the call of God, we prepare ourselves to enter the Lord's rest. God is not just at the end of our life waiting for us there. God is with us at every moment of our lives. However, in the final moment of our lives, we will see God's love and everlasting light. What God creates, God loves. And what God loves, God loves everlasting. In our second reading, St. Paul's message to us is one of hope. He focuses on the unseen and the eternal, beyond the senses and beyond the logic of the world. St. Paul urges believers to look to a final experience that cannot compare in weight or in time with the present day afflictions. Most importantly, he also places Jesus at the center of his sufferings. Jesus brings purpose to affliction as he experienced it himself. And it is through the Paschal mystery, the dying and rising of Jesus, that we can have hope. In our gospel reading from John, Jesus talks about finding peace for troubled hearts, about trusting in Jesus, and about finding the way home. Jesus is saying goodbye to his closest friends, an opportunity we would all like to have before death comes. Near the end of Jesus' life on earth, he spoke to his disciples these very comforting words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. We will always be people in waiting, waiting for our final resting place. And what Jesus wants us to realize is that he is the way to the place he has prepared for us. Today we say goodbye to Verlin and pray that he may take his rest and be at home with all the faithful departed and our Lord Jesus in his Father's house. That is what Jesus makes possible for all of us. We are blessed to gather together as family and friends and pray and to pray for Verlin and for ourselves and to offer this Eucharist a word which means thanksgiving, thanking God for the gift of the life of Verlin. May the choirs of angels welcome you, Verlin, and lead you to the loving embrace of Jesus. And may you find eternal rest. Amen. My friends, I would now invite us to stand again. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of all those who trust in him, we now join our prayers to Jesus. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Verlin, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased relatives of the Borman and Feller families, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Verlin who seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother and grant him the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I would now invite us to be seated as we prepare our altar and bring forward the gifts. I would now invite us to stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Verlin, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In Christ, the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Verlin, 
whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. But now invite us to stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Today for communion, we'll, we'll come down the center aisle, then uh, go off to the sides. Those in the, the outside pews encourage you to sort of filter in uh, when it gets to your row. Uh, in the Catholic Church, in a funeral, everyone is welcome forward. All those who are, are Catholic, you're very welcome to receive the Eucharist if you, 
if you desire today, and uh, those who aren't Catholic here, you're welcome for it as well uh, for a blessing. Again, everyone is welcome for it either for communion or, or blessing today if you, if you desire to. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Brothers and sisters, I would now invite us to stand. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it our servant Verlin, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of the family, I, I want to thank all of you for coming here today to support, support them and to pray for Verlin. Please, please continue to do so in this time ahead. Immediately after the, the service today, uh, we'll head out to the cemetery and do the, the committal service. Uh, but for those who those who would like your, and aren't going to the cemetery, you're welcome to head straight to the parish hall uh, to start in the meal. Um, 
if you'd like. And since uh, some will be starting now and some will be starting later, we'll just say the meal prayer uh, right now. God, our Father, who have blessed us in many ways in our lives, and especially blessed us through the life of our brother Verlin, we ask your blessing on him, for your mercy to embrace him and enfold him. May this food that we are about to receive, may it nourish and strengthen us, just as Verlin did in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Verlin, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Verlin in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and all are with you and with our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Mm -hmm. 